Pick up the phone. Call the donation hotline. Phone the donation hotline. Donation hotline. Call the donation hotline. The donation hotline. Donation hotline. And donate now. Zakah applicable for the new Muslim project. Call the donation hotline and your zakah is applicable. We're looking for <coughs> at least 10 to 20,000 pounds tonight just to pay for those new Muslims so we can look after them so they don't apostate from the deen. In America, 70% of them apostate from the deen. Here, between anecdotally, 30 to 40% of them apostate from the deen. All we're humbly saying, in a humble way, you think what isostasis is. Yeah. Out to raise 35,000 pounds. Ramadan. Call the donation hotline. Get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, Ya Rabb. Allah make it a reality that they will have genital fiddos, that they will have the red camels which is the best riding beast. Imagine, okay, just imagine before we take the next call, that there are two people. Mm -hmm. The two people are resurrected in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're next to them but you're not, you're never gonna, you're not even gonna see them because you're gonna be so concerned about your own self. Imagine there's a person that has been supported in Somalia and you saved his life, okay? Right? But that, that person, the person did not pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you got the reward for saving his life. But there's another person next to him who you guided to the deen of Islam. You saved his body in this world, his baddan. It's just baddan, it's just sticky clay, teeny lazin, hammer in masnoon. It's nothing more than clay. But you saved that life and the soul, you enabled them to enter the paradise. Isn't that the sort of thing that you want to have around you on the day of judgment? You want to have that person you saved in Somalia, that person you saved his body. It, maybe he wasn't practicing Islam and then he started. But then you saved the person who was living in London or England or Nottingham or Germany or France or America or the moon, wherever it was. <laughs> you get the reward of everything that person does without his reward being diminished in the slightest. Yeah. This Call of Duty Dawah training course, we need you to put it on. We need some beautiful person to call in. £1,000 will allow us to put this course on for 100 attendees. Just think for a moment. You make that donation. We put the course on. 100 people come, they learn how to give Dawah. Yeah. Those 100 people will go away and spread the message of Islam. If even one person from among that 100 person gets a Shahada, who's getting the reward? You are brothers and sisters. It is better than red camels. Salaamu Alaikum caller. Wa Alaikum Islam. Oh, uh, brother, what is your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Usama and I'm calling from Rochdale. Oh, Usama, <laughs> mashallah, all the way from Rochdale. Usama, what would you like to say and would you like to donate anything towards this cause of Dawah? I would like to donate a hundred pounds. Allahu Akbar. Hundred pounds, Thank you so much. I'm only ten years old. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. We know that it's the month of Ramadan, and we know that there are so many other um, appeals going on out there, you know, to save lives. But let's not forget about the importance of saving souls. You know, brothers and sisters, that whatever happens out there in the world, the amount of shahadas that we can accumulate from the work that we do. It is on a massive scale, mashallah, and it's just, on, even on, the, on, the, on our mizan, it's just something which is just unfathomable. There's only really so much of this you can take. Um, when the um, Yusuf Chambers is sitting there saying, um, it's better to appear in front of Allah having saved a soul rather than just a worthless piece of clay. You know, you could give your money to feed a Somalian and save his life, but it's so much better to be giving money to them to spread their religion because saving a soul is worth so much more. Um, now, I'd phoned early on in the night around 10 o'clock. It started at half nine. I phoned around 10. Um, I phoned and said I was an atheist and made up some crap story about how some Muslim had sent me there and to see this booklet that it was real. Um, a pretense just to get on. Um, and he said, what's your name? And I said, Ed. And the guy on the phone said, Ed the Rationalizer. <laughs> and I acted dumb. I said, Ed what? 
Ed, and he said, what's your name, Ed? I said, Ed Jones. And he said, I'll put you through. So I went on hold for about 30 seconds and then I was cut off. So I phoned back and said, I was waiting to get on. He said, oh, okay, you're putting me through. I waited for about 30 seconds and then I was cut off. I phoned back, I waited and then I was cut off. So I phoned again and I said, look, I seem to be having some trouble. Um, I keep getting cut off. And he says, well, the lines are very busy at the moment, so why don't you give us your number and we'll phone you back um, when there's an available slot. So I gave him uh, a mobile number and waited, even though I knew that they wouldn't phone me back. Um, in the meantime, I was hanging around on their Facebook page and I saw that they'd posted a message saying we haven't got many callers please can people call in something like that not exact word for word but to that effect so what I did I took a photo of some random bloke off the web put it on a profile um, chain, put the profile name to um, Ed Jones and <laughs> posted on there in really bad English I've come here tonight because someone sent me and they're going to phone me back but I'm going to bed in a minute but it was good watching and stuff and then on the show they said they read it out I was getting ready for bed and my wife called she said they've just read your message out on the telly they've said Ed phone us and I looked at the Facebook group and it said um, Ed phone in phone in um, tell them Ayo said to put you straight through uh, to the studio. So, I went and phoned. Asalaamu Alaikum caller. Hello. Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello, is that me? Is this Edward Jones, is that Edward? Oh, hello. How are you doing, Edward? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? <laughs> Excellent, it's really wonderful was, for you to call in, mate. I was just getting ready for bed and my wife <laughs> told me that she said the phone. Wonderful. Tell me I, something, Edward, do me a favour. First of all, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I, I don't know what to tell you really. I was, uh, you know, I, whenever I put religion on things, I always put Church of England. Yeah. That's what my mum always told me to put. Yeah. Um, I'd never really thought about it really. Um, I, was on a, I was on an internet chat thing. Yeah. And I was looking at these Christian <laughs> stuff and they... Uh, Muslim man started talking to me. Yes. And he says, I want to send you a book about a man in a pair of red pants. <laughs> <laughs> I said, mate, you can keep your book. <laughs> Don't send that to me. <laughs> Did you read it though, Edwards? I haven't had it yet. It's only been a couple of days that he said that he was going to send me this thing. And yeah. I didn't know what to make of him. And he said, no, it's free or it's free or what? Yeah. What this thing, uh, which is you guys, and I've I put the telly on and you're holding up this and I saw the book about a man in red underpants. Yes, it's the same so, book. <laughs> so I think it, it'll be safe for him to send me that book, I think. Yeah. Edward, um, you know, this whole appeal tonight is about spreading the message of Islam and making um, individuals like yourself more aware of Islam and letting you understand the beauties and the wonders of Islam and it's in a way where you can actually understand it where you can actually just reflect because that's what it's all about it's about reflecting and we have people in place and this is what IERA is all about who are actually out there who will actually relay the message of Islam onto you in a manner which you'll find non-threatening you know, peaceful, calm, relaxing, where you can engage in positive conversation. And that's why I'm so happy that you called in today. I mean, people like my colleague here, Adnan, now, mashallah, you know, he's, um, I say mashallah, that's um, one of the um, Islamic uh, terminolo terminologies, which I hope that you will learn soon. But Adnan, he speaks to, um, you know, not yet Muslims, as we like to refer to, um, you know, uh, like yourself. And I want Adnan to um, have a quick word of you, inshallah, because this is, you know, tonight's show is all about you. Adnan. Hi, Edward. Salaam alaikum. Yeah. Edward, you, you are not a Muslim yet? No, I'm, I'm not He's a Muslim. In this game I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't really know what to think. But I Ad talked to this guy, and Ad he said this thing that really, like, messed with my head a bit, really. He said that, um, he asked if I believed in God, and I said, well, you know, I don't know. He might be there, and he might not. It doesn't matter. Edward. And he, and he says, you've got to think of your life like... Imagine if it's a bet, you can only ever make one. 
You can't go back and change it. Edward. Now, what happens if you don't believe um, and it's not real? And I said, well, nothing happens. It doesn't matter. No. Right. Well, no, he said, if you do believe and, and, I, and I die and it's not real, and, and no, it doesn't matter. And he says, but what if you don't believe <coughs> and then you die and it is real and then you've lost the bet? That's right. So Absolutely. if I believe it and then, you know, it, it, was, it was like a win win, really. Edward, are you going to make our night today then? Mm -hmm. Am I going to what? Are you going to make our day, or I should say, our night tonight? Are you going to make our night? He's asking well, Edward. Oh, oh, well, I was just listening to what you was just saying, and you said um, it was someone was talking about um, people all standing next to each other and being judged, and a Somalian being there, and things like this. And he said that if he fed that Somalia, that he would get that reward in heaven anyway. Yes. Now. That sounded to me just like that best. And right. I thought, well, if, if you feed the Somalian and there's no God, then you win because you save someone's life. But if you're feeding the Somalian, you give money to you guys, mm -hmm. and then it turns out there is no Allah in the afterlife. Well, then you've lost Edward, no, Edward. So the only way to win definitely yes. is to give the money to the Somalian and save his life because sure. it's a win-win situation. We, and Ed I think the best way to tell someone what a beautiful life you live is to show them a beautiful act of kindness. So if you show these people a beautiful act, not only will they not die a non-Muslim, but they will continue to Edward, what, what you have to understand is, Edward, yeah, the Islam is a, is a religion of balance, of mizan. It's a religion of balance. You have to balance things. You have to take care of all things simultaneously. We, myself, I am personally involved in raising money for Somalia. I am doing it as we speak. I'm receiving messages as um, my phone is outside. It's not with me. So we are involved in that work too. But this work is also very important. You got to have a balance. Mm. So for this reason, we are having this appeal tonight specifically for Just this purpose. Exactly. And we are yeah. firmly, we have a firm belief that God, Allah exists. You simply cannot deny the existence of God. If you are a rational person, you cannot deny the existence of Allah. The evidence is in your face. And if that's true, Edward, this is the time for you to become a Muslim. It is, it, it, this is a time for you to embrace Islam because this is the truth. And if you do that, you get the reward in this world and in the hereafter. So when you die, you face the reality, you're not ashamed. You see, and when you live, you live a peaceful life, you live a humane life, you live a good life. A Muslim is a happy man. A Muslim is a person who is satisfied with what he has. So a Muslim has nothing to lose in this world and in the hereafter. So it's a good deal, Edward. I think you should go ahead, take the brave step, and embrace Islam, and then we can talk about the details. How about that, Edward? Are okay. you ready? Okay, Edward, um, thank you so much for that call. And you know what? I want to make sure, Edward, that you, you contact <coughs> us at, at IERA. Um, our website is www.iera.org.uk. Have a look on there. But also, more importantly, send us an email at info at iera.org.uk. We want to hear from you, Edward. We want you to come down to the office and have a chat with us. Mashallah, that was wonderful. We were talking about Malawi.